Hey there, Father Michael here. A lot going on today. That's why I'm running a little bit behind. So a bunch of things. Somebody reached out to me today, someone that I've known for a while, struggling, struggling with their recovery, with life in general, asking for prayers. Someone who's really, really struggling today. And then I went on social media and a pastor, a friend of mine in India, lost his wife to COVID, leaving him with two young children to raise by himself. A long, very tortured post today asking for help from all of his support network. Because after helping so many other families with his food ministry and, and bringing essential supplies to so many people during the COVID lockdown for so long, he's left in a space now asking why God let this happen. It's also Gay Pride Month, and I am more acutely aware than ever of the issues that continue to threaten GLBTQ people, whether it's in the workplace, in academia, in their own families, certainly in their churches. And one thing that has really gotten my goat this week is that recovering addicts are being judged and even turned away by a group that calls itself Christian, Celebrate Recovery is what I'm talking about, because their theology is right-wing evangelical nonsense. They don't believe people should even have any higher power other than Jesus, Otherwise, they're flirting with demonic possession. I don't know what you were living in. Apparently, we're living in the first century, but there it is. I know two couples, two same-sex couples turned away from those celebrate recoveries. Oh, yeah, it's a great celebration if you're straight, white, and right-wing evangelical. Otherwise, you're SOL. So what do we do? What do we do in the face of life's storms, whether they are of our own making or because of someone else's choices or because of the random nature of living this life? Here's the thing. I keep coming back to this. God is either all-powerful or all loving, but he can't be both because, this is pretty simple stuff, if God is in fact all powerful and can do anything, then we, you and I, have a long list of crimes against humanity to charge God with. Babies have been dying. Mothers of young children are dying. People are killed in gun violence every damn week in this country. So if God is supposed to be all-powerful and all-loving, then why are people still struggling? Why are bad and mentally disturbed people allowed to get guns and kill people? Why are mothers dying of COVID, why are the powers of human religion allowed to further harm people? You see the problem? So God cannot be all-powerful. That means God can only be all-loving. I pray for healing all the time, for people's highest good. I don't know what that really means, highest good, because I'm not God. 
and sometimes their physical healing maybe is not in their highest good. I don't know. I do know that healing is more than physical. It's more than a cessation of physical discomfort and pain. It's, it's emotional wellness and mental and spiritual wholeness. As I was driving home yesterday, last evening, from having been out of town, there were some enormous cumulonimbus clouds on the horizon. And they were just spectacular in their height and big, white, fluffy beauty. They mean, they looked like maybe I was driving into, you know, uh, Arizona or Colorado or even, you know, uh, West Virginia, looking at mountains. It looked straight up like there were mountains on the horizon. It was spectacularly beautiful. Big, white, fluffy piles of clouds. But if you look carefully at those clouds, the underside is something else because the bottom edge is always very dark. So, from my perspective yesterday, everything looked magnificent and majestic and breathtakingly awesome. But to the people beneath those clouds, that was a whole different thing. It was dark for them, and it was stormy, and it was anything but beautiful. So, is God taking things from my perspective? Is God preferring to hang out in the white, fluffy beauty of the cumulonimbus reality? Or is God somehow beneath all of that and struggling alongside us in the storm? We have all been through a lot of stuff in this life. And I am no exception, and I'm not exceptionally uh, struck by tragedy. I've buried two of my three sons. It is what it is. So I know. I know what it's like to struggle. I've cried myself to sleep many times, and I've lost sleep this week, wondering how everything is going to turn out. But this much I know. An all-loving God always helps me work things out. An all-loving God does not ever forsake me. God is not doing magic tricks for me. If I would happen to lose a limb, I know 100% God is not going to help me regenerate a new limb. That's the parameters of God. God's power. God is not going to change the laws of nature or swoop and save every sick child or every sick mother. God cannot prevent every GLBTQ person from being hated and rejected and judged by those who claim to be some kind of Christian any more than God can guarantee every recovering drug addict or alcoholic that life is going to be pain-free and without any struggle or sorrow or anguish. But God is all-loving. And that means we are not alone in this. God is not letting us go. God is in fact right within us, next to us, above us, behind us, below, to our right and to our left, trying to help us to find a breath of peace, even in the worst storm. In the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, there is that story of Jesus in the boat, asleep, 
and eventually he wakes up. Verse 39, waking up, Jesus rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was dead calm. It's that calm that I'm praying for, for all of the people I know who are struggling, including myself today. Is it magic? No. Is God going to swoop and do some amazing tricks and miracles and all that? No. We are the miracle. We are the presence of the living Christ. We have the power to say to the wind within us, peace, be still. We're the ones with all the power, with all the love that God can pour into us, all the love that we can hold. Let's try to be good with that today. Pray with me. All-loving God. Emmanuel, God with us in the storms of this life. Open our hearts and minds in this moment to the possibility of gratitude, even in the face of today's storms and uncertainties. Help us today, gracious God, to set aside as best we can our anxiety and our fear and our resentment and step out into the sunlight of your amazing grace. You have pulled us through so many challenging times and circumstances before. And we have no rational reason to doubt that you will once again help us find a way forward. Be with all of those who need our prayers today. If they are feeling on like they are in the tempest on stormy seas, remind them of the presence of your Christ and help them to find the words to say, peace, be still, and live in that truth today. Amen. See you tomorrow.